Laffer, former Reagan econ uh, economist, Presidential Medal of Freedom recipient, and the author of Taxes Have Consequences. Art, right, good to see you. Listen, I, I, the, the Fed only has one tool, right? They can raise rates, but they also mention the problem with spending, right? And just to go over this, I mean, first of all, th we run about a trillion dollar deficit every uh, every year just with the average spending that we have with with uh, current legislation for the for the Pentagon and for education and. But they've also, Democrats, have spent $1.9 trillion on COVID when they came into uh, power, $1.2 trillion on infrastructure, $700 billion on the Inflation Reduction Act, $280 billion on the CHIPS Act, and now uh, are a trillion dollars on uh, uh, loan forgiveness. Uh, what, is, what is going on here? Maybe they should stop spending and, and, and inflation would come down and we could lower rates. I think you're, we're all on the same page on that, Sean. But the Fed has more policies than just interest rates. Let me just say they can do what Volcker did and let interest rates seek their own level, and they can then control the size of the Fed balance sheet. As long as they are fixing interest rates, they cannot control the size of the Fed's balance sheet. They got to buy bonds at the interest rates they, they come out with or sell bonds at that interest rate. They can't do that. So they have a choice of quantity or price that they do have. Now, they don't have any control over what the Congress and the administration spend. And, you know, one of the most lovely things in, in this world, if, if, if I may, Sean, if you, you know a big family when you see one. You've got one. Isn't it wonderful when all the members of the family are fighting each other simultaneously and we're just sitting back watching the action? You see Congress spending way too much money and then complaining about it. The administrative signs the bills and then blames the Fed for high interest rates and the Fed doesn't know what. It's a wonderful scenario. See these people doing what they're doing. It's just crazy what's going on. You talk about the blame game. Uh, I want to listen to Senator Elizabeth fun, yes. Warren and uh, I want you to react. Let's go. There is nothing in raising the interest rates, nothing in Jerome Powell's tool bag that deals directly with those. And he has admitted as much in congressional hearings when I've asked him about it. Do you know what's worse than high prices and a strong economy? It's high prices and millions of people out of work. I'm very worried that the Fed is going to tip this economy into recession. Art, does Liz Warren know what she's talking about? Uh, a, a little bit. She does oh, a little bit. Okay. Uh, she is right that if the interest rates went back up to the levels they would, that would have a deleterious impact on the economy because they've waited so long to bring inflation down and try to control it. Uh, but the, the Fed uh, has the interest rate model in mind, and uh, that's what they're doing. And uh, I don't know what Liz Warren wants to, uh, to us to do is lower interest rates to minus 30 percent per annum. So if you borrow money from the government, uh, they pay you 30 percent per year for borrowing it. I'm in there for a lot of borrowing, Sean, just for the record. Now, I do have some very good news oh, for you, if okay. I may. We've been talking about all this bad stuff. I'm expecting my 14th grandchild, number one. And number two, my son-in-law uh, won the primary in, in Michigan in the state Senate. Uh, in the 17th district down by Hillsdale, defeating an incumbent. So it looks pretty good for the general election. How's that my for great God, news? Well, are You've you got a great up-and-comer coming in my son-in-law. You're having a you're having a great day, uh, but I'm going to go back to bad news again. I okay, am, you a, you can't you can't bring me up. I'm going I'm going back down, Art. Even though you got new grandkids and you got you know kids okay, winning Senate go. primaries. Okay, let's go down. Here we go. Uh, the Wall Street Journal. Uh, they had an editorial today, and it reads: The IRS wants to sell you on its service. They're the tax collectors, and they're here to help. You served with Reagan Arts, yeah. and to think that the IRS, with 87,000 new agents, is coming to help you out, maybe we should just simplify the tax code. Maybe we should just lower rates so we can yeah. all navigate the tax code as opposed to bringing in 87,000 new government employees to come and attack the average Joe about their taxes. Yeah, let, let me, if I can, say just something about the tax code, if I may. Yeah. Uh, the tax code, especially for the rich, the top 1% or the top 2 or 3%, uh, all the big corporations, all those people, now not the partnerships and little mom and pop stores, but the great big ones, all hire ex IRS agents to work with them to make sure they never make a mistake, or if they do make a mistake, it's a small one, so there's not a big deal for an audit. They're going to hire 87,000 new IRS agents. These people require training. They require skills on the job before they can become even close to being competent. If you look at some of these big companies that these people are going to be going to and auditing, 
they're not going to have the skill levels to match the skill levels of those companies. And those companies are doing all their own. To make these people worthwhile for the IRS, they got to go way down into the tax paying population. They got to go down to lower income earners. They've got to go into smaller companies and they've got to harass the living heck out of these people to get the money that will pay for their being there and the 200 million that Biden said we're going to get. We're 200 billion, excuse me, that we're going to get. This is nothing but something that's not needed. Now, if you had a low rate, broad based flat tax, like the one I did for Jerry Brown right. when he ran for president in 1992. If you had that low rate broad based flat tax, you would need minimal IRS people because yeah. everyone would know at Easy. the low rate broad based flat tax, everyone's paying their fair share and That's the right. people would be compliant. They would go along with it. They wouldn't try to seek loopholes and shelters and Art. dodges and omissions and credits. I'm going to tell you what. They wouldn't do any of that stuff. They pay their taxes fair and square and you wouldn't need it's, many it's, IRS it's agents it's, at it's, all. It's going that's to be the right way to do it. It's going to be 87,000 go new IRS agents that are going to work for the Democrat Party coming after Republicans who might say the wrong thing or donate the wrong way. They're coming for you. They're not. This is not broad based. This is Republican based um, operatives working at the IRS. Art, don't, don't be. Oh, go ahead. Don't be too cynical, Sean. Oh, I am. Uh, you know, soon they're going to try to kill all of us and we're going to be all gone. And then they're going to start going after each other. They're going to be like a pack of dogs going after each other. Believe me, there will be lots of Democrats that will suffer enormously from the 87 new thousand new agents. Believe well, me when I tell well, you Art, that. Well, Art, I got to tell you what they you are. They won't just be happy with just Republicans. You are an optimist because you're, you're having grandchildren and your kids are running for office. So you see the sun rising in America. And I love that about you. I was a dose of common sense. I do. I do. I do. And I'm 82 <laughs> years old and I'm going to watch at least 60 more sunrises. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for joining me, Art. Appreciate it.